Hi guys, I thought today we'd have a little look at uh, programmers and flash chips and biases and laws as I've had quite a few requests. Um, try, and, try and sort of answer all your questions in one go. Um, the common one is, you know, what do I need to read a chip? Well, the thing is it depends on the chip, but if you're talking normal flash chips, say um, like on the game consoles, um, BIOS chips, most of them are quite small. Um, and to be honest with you, you don't really need to get over elaborate like some of these are. I mean, you're looking sort of a thousand pounds, a couple hundred, I think that must be somewhat close to about 150. Um, and then about eight or nine quid, you know, it's no comparison. Um, these are limited to basically SPI and I2C chips, which is your EEPROM 24 and 25 series. But if that's all you're interested in doing, this is all you need. Um, and they work very well. The only thing is they're a single lane, so SPI you can have up to quad channel so it means you can read four data bits at once and it's quite fast when you uh, you'll see the difference later um these are quite slow but for your average size chip they're okay um if you're looking at say a ps4 flash and all that'll take four and a half minutes to read it and about half hour to write to it it's quite slow to write whereas the urpi i think it takes about one to one to about three seconds to read it and uh, I think it was about three or four minutes to write that's sort of the difference you get um, actually that was not on that chip that was on a smaller chip I'll, I'll check it I'll, I'll have a look we'll have a look anyway so uh, yes they're a good little unit the only thing I'm going to comment about is something that I've seen no end of people bring up on YouTube and that's the fact they the data bus on here is 5 volt now a lot of these chips we're using are only 1.7 to 3.3 volts so running them on 5 volts on the data point is quite high the I think one particular chap brought up the fact that the current is so low that it won't damage the chips um, I beg to differ because I've I've actually stuck this thing on an analyzer and the voltage doesn't drop off at all and you get a slightly iffy chip and um, yeah I think it could cane it um, I haven't had it kill a chip yet but I've modified mine to the 3.3 volt so this is entirely up to yourself whether you do it or not or whether you can find one of these converters this is a 1.8 volt converter. What it does, it goes in the socket and then the chip goes in the converter. There is a 3.3 volt version, but I haven't just couldn't find it for to show you. The the mod is quite straightforward because it's only virtually one wire, um, and all you're doing is lifting one pin, the last pin of the chip, off the board. And solder a wire to it and then solder the wire to the center pin of the 3.3 volt regulator um, then the other thing uh, the other more part of the mod is pin 9 of the chip also goes to the 3 volt regulator now pin 9 goes to one end of C4 and on here it's just right next to where that bunch of wires is you can't actually see it and on this particular one it's on up the top here and all you got to do is make sure you put the the uh, the end that goes to pin nine on the chip to the positive. But it, you'll find there's um, if you look through the Neo software, if you download it, there's some documents when you install it, and they even they'll show you in the documents there. Even the program itself uh, shows you the fact that there there is a mod. Um, I'll try and show you. Hang on. Right, there you go, bottom left program, that one open. That little picture below the zip socket is actually showing where the little wire goes onto the last pin of the chip. 
you actually do have to lift that pin off the pad. Um, the only thing that's not quite right there, on that one, they've got it so you can change it between 5 volt and 3 volt. Um, it's very unlikely you're going to find 5 volt nors. Most of them are all 3.3. So if you set it to 3.3, you won't go far wrong. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So you've got a chip you want to read. Um, at this point in time, um, it's probably the easiest way is to take the chip off the board and put it onto a little test board to read it. Um, to read them in circuit can be a problem for the simple reason um, if you've got a soik where you use a clip, um, a they're, they're so the chip uh, the, the clips. If you if you went to buy a professional clip, they cost you about seventy quid. But you can pick them up for about three or four quid, and you can, as you can guess, they they are so poor. Um, they're crazy. Now the problems with them also is not the time. There's not enough room to get a clip on. And secondly, the other problem is the v, the supply to the chip comes from the programmer. Now if you clip that across a chip in circuit, and there's a lot of stuff in circuit with the chip. A, it's going to pull the supply rail down on your programmer, so you're not going to be able to program or read your chip. Or it um, can actually supply uh, it, the supply onto the board to actually, I don't know, if you've got a, a Syscon, say, the Syscon chip will try and oscillate and run, and because then you, you can't read the uh, NOR anyway. So it's, it can be bloody awkward. It's easier to take them off the board. If you don't, then the only other way, safe way to do it, is to not connect the, H, the supply from the um, reader, but use a separate supply from your external power supply and wind it down, say, to that 2.9 volts or like that, so that uh, anything on the 3.3 rail doesn't wake up. The chip will, because I'll work down to about 1.8 volt. It's just when you're writing sometimes that uh, you need to be a little bit higher. Okay, so I've waffled on enough. Let's get this thing and have a look, shall we? Right, this is a, um, a chip that I pulled off. Um, I don't know what I pulled it out of, to be honest. It was out of a... I think it was out of an old... Um, it wasn't a hard drive, but it was out of something. I can't remember, but anyway, I put pop the chip on here, noting the pin numbers, pin one being the spot, pin one, and then this shows you a little drawing of how it goes into the programmer. And on the program itself, if you look at the side here, there's two little sort of uh, drawings. One says 25, one says 24, meaning the type of chip. So it shows the notch going to the top. So in other words, pins one or the first and last pin uh, are towards the, the post here. Um, two five XX, I mean, in other words, SPI chips go in the first four socket uh, pins of the socket, and the two four series go in the second. And on the back, it shows you that you can see there. So this is an SPI. So we'll pop that in. So there we go. Now we'll go over to the software. And uh, here it is here. And as I say, there's the little drawing I was telling you about about the mod for me. So it's quite quite funny that. Okay, so we'll detect the chip. Hit detect. Well it gives us a bit of a choice. I know it's a 4006 and it's a V something, that one, there it is there. So we'll select that and we'll hit read. There we go. These uh, here, um, this chip I have already written to it because uh, what I did, I created um, a, with a, another bit of software, it, I created a, a test fin, uh, file for it. And uh, I even stuck my name at the end here, and you can see it there. Um, so we've read the chip. 
So what we can do with it? Okay, well we'll save the data. So we'll go and save it. Uh, there we go, 641 bin. I've already done it, so I'm just going to overwrite it. Um, it's always good to actually do a couple of three readings of the NOR, especially if it's a large one. Um, just in case you do get a problem where you get even one byte difference could be all the difference between this thing working or not. So what I would do, I'm going to just clear the buffer so we can see it's read again and read it again. Okay, and we'll save that as well. So I'm going to save. I'll save that as version 2. Okay. So we've actually saved two two uh, dumps of the same chip. And what we need to do now is just go and have a little nosy. Um, make sure that the, uh, the two files are the same. If not, then you've got a problem. It means either you've got a bad connection, the chip's faulty, or you've just done something wrong. Uh, I've done it myself. I've uh wired things up and put missed or got a pin the wrong way around you know like a, one of the io pins um sometimes it reads but it completely displaces the actual data so anyway i'll open that one up and we'll do a comparison so we'll drop number two which is the second one into that like so and this is going to compare them. If there's any differences, they, they'll stand out bright orange. The reason I'm using this little program is because it's, it's only a small door. If it was anything bigger, I'd have to use something else. Otherwise, you'd miss it. That looks fine. Just to show you what it does look like, if they are different, we'll open one of those files again and I'm going to drop a file in that is totally different and you'll see what I mean there you go so you, you can't exactly miss the fact that there's something different the only bits that are the same are the bits that are in white so there you go and it only takes one byte to completely ruin uh, a bit of software especially if it's uh, in a NOR because a lot of them are flags so you might only have two byte flag um, so or even one byte so the difference can be uh, whether it works or not I suppose really right now so we've got this file we've read the data I'm not sure what your circumstances are but if you're doing something like with the validator for the PS4s and things there's already videos on the on the site where you can go and look at them. Um, I mean, that's as a classic there. The PS4 NOR, you're changing a byte in the NOR to enable the UART to work. It's simple as that. Um, I should be going into that a lot deeper soon. I'm just putting a, um, a little project together um, so that I can show you. Uh, I think I've already done a quick video of how to put together uh, the Syscom reader um, that's for the the free version um, because the writer uh, is not free they charge for that and they charge now for the validator I think you get one use of it for free but there are as I say that's uh, if you're a business and you're doing it all the time then yeah you, you'd have to pay for it now, the other thing is also, um, I think biases. Um, I think somebody asked me this morning, they got a Mac. Um, I don't do Macs, but I know what you're on about. The thing is, if you've got, if you know what the, um, what, what the parts of the, of the bias you need to change, say, so you know the address now when you look through the chip you can see on here i'm scrolling down the numbers here on the left are changing now that's the address of um, of that point in the chip that is in what they call hexadecimal all right the easiest way of doing this is probably to open the uh, file in an editor 
So if we open this up in an editor, um, where are we? Uh, HXD edit. Um, we'll chop that in for that. Um, let's pick a, the thing is, it depends. Um, if you've got, say, a known raw um, section that you've got to change in the NOR, you go to the address, which would be on the left, as I said earlier on, it's in hex. Um, and then you must make sure that you paste it over the top so you don't insert the data. Otherwise, you'll make the file bigger. If you're changing data, you're physically overwriting it. Let's say uh, page 020 here. Now, if I write it on this side, I'm going to have to enter it in hex. If I write it here, I can write it in virtual just text. And it will convert it to, uh, to decimal. Uh, sorry, hexadecimal. You'll see as I type. So Steve was here, and um, that's at line 1FP0, so we'll save that. Okay, now we'll go back to the program. We we'll need to load that program. This is what we originally saved, don't forget. So we'll open that. Uh, it's on FD0, well, it was different, we said, didn't we? So, uh, and there it is, see, there. So, that's where we've written it. Now we need to write it to the, the, um, the NOR, or the flash, or the SPI, but it's the, the memory. So we need to erase that thing first. Um, I don't think this is bit protected, so we'll just hit the erase. That will erase the chip because you can't write over it if it's not. That was a bit quick. My guess is I'll oh, didn't erase that. Um, I can find out is to read it. Yeah, it did. All FF. So that's erased it. So everything set back to FF. It's uh, an awkward thing, as I say, when you program a chip. Um, if it's not a large chip, it's just as easy just to erase the chip and then write the new firmware in. Um, if it's a large chip, oh, we'll program that in now. If it's a large chip, very large then you can actually load to uh, parts of it because it will be broken down into sectors depending how big they are and how big the chip is as to which sector and the size right so we've written to that now so in theory the new data that we made up should actually be in the chip so if we now read it and go to the location um, There we go, page two zero, and there that is. Steve was there. So again, that's basically simple programming. Now, as I say, that's using a uh, the uh, the CH three four one A, which is not wrong. That's a good reader. What I'm going to do now is is dump a um, PS four nor in there and show you what that's like to read. Um, right, this is a bit of a weird one because it's actually a 16-pin device. Um, but it's in a, a reader, it's in a holder, which converts it down to four pin. It, basically, seven pins of the chip aren't used. So it uh, makes, it's just an easier way of doing it, that's all. So, we go back to the reader. So what we'll do, we'll hit detect. 
Oh, it's found some. Well, I know for a fact it's the 25635F. But for some reason or other, it hasn't got an F on here. So we go for the E, which is much the same thing. So what we'll do, we'll read that. And straight away, you can see it belongs to, can't you? Which I'll cover up. Um, and the time it takes to read, um, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so about take about four minutes to read. Right, that other one I stopped at because it'd take forever. So you get the idea how long that would take. What I have done, I've just um, pulled up this. Uh, this is a right unusual little thing. This is some I was sent this quite a while ago and never really looked at it until today. Um, it's actually a pretty amazing little kitty. Um, it's got a brilliant self-detect, although it keeps saying it's a 3-3-F, but it's not. It's a 3-5-F. Um, 265 3-5-E. 3-5-F, that one is. Um, again, this is uh, not a bad little programmer. It's, um, I can't find the price on it, but I'm sure if you can look it up, it's uh, iFix, it's made by and uh, it's uh, RT809F um, and I'll just do a quick read on it as you can see it's fairly <laughs> quite a lot quicker that's the same chip as the one I was I, I gave up with that other one it'll read um, oh, it takes about uh, about a minute or so, which isn't too bad. It's it's a lot faster than the other one, anyway. Again, this is not, I don't think this is reading in quad, but it, it it's just got a higher clock rate. It's a better better reader. These chips um, have uh, what they call quad facilities to be read. In other words, you can read four bits of data at once instead of one. So there we go. So we we'll save that. Um, then I'll show you a couple of others. This is the E56, and you can see the make. They do um, a T48 um, and a, I think it's a, an 866 uh, plus. Now, unfortunately, I've got one of those as well, but it keeps throwing up errors, so I'm not sure if it's just gone wrong or uh, or what. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at it. So we've got an MXL 25CL we have on there, device info. Shows you how to fit it into the socket. Or if you want to hardwire it, shows how to hardwire it there. And we'll go to read, and then we'll read. There's the ID, and that's as you can see. That's quite a lot quicker than the, even the last reader. Um, there's the data. If I scroll down a bit, there we go. So you can see that's fairly quick. And then the creme, the creme. This has got. This is actually my favourite, mind you. <laughs> it's a good reader. And it's quick as well. Right, let's just put that one out of the way. No more one. Okay. Right. Um, So we're asking for chip, there's the chip to six, uh, six three five F uh L two five six three five F. Okay, 
with the header. Um, now, at the moment, this is set for a normal clock speed um, to read fast. So I'll read it. And as you can see, it's fairly quick. Now, that took 5.34 seconds as opposed to the CH341 that took four and a half minutes to read that. Now, if I put this now on fast clock, and we'll read this on two, it's dual, it's not quad, because the chip, I'm not sure if it will read in quad, I'll give it a go. But this is in dual, and that's 1.94 seconds. Um, I'll take it up to quad, and we'll try that. Um, read again. There you go, 1.0103 seconds. These, that's the sort of differences, but you know, you, you don't need to read that sort of speed. Um, and that's it really. That's just a little bit about programmers and what you can and can't do. As I say, the main thing is, what you've got to remember with Flash is you've got to erase the parts you want to overwrite. You can't just pick one part, one byte, you've got to pick a sector. So, to be honest, for, the, for these things that we're dealing with, um, most of them aren't that big. So, it's just as easy just to uh, erase the whole chip um, and rewrite it. But make sure you get at least two or three good um, dumps uh, all look the same before you do anything to the chip like erase it because you know it is so easy to get a bad reading and you wouldn't know um that's how i found out that the other programmer i got which is um the smaller version of the of that one that's the t56 the, the I think the first one they came out with, uh, there it is, was the, that one, um, which is the TL8662 Plus. Unfortunately, I don't know what's the matter with it. it um, it's using the same software as the other one, uh, but it's it seems to be uh let me just close some of this software down uh shut down the app shut that one down oh great software that plays music to you when you close it so what we got as i say the uh the chip sits up this end of the socket on the new one it's this end which makes life a bit easier um Let's see what we do. As I say, I'll read it. Um, let me go back to software. Uh, status register, flash. Okay, we need to read. Right, so I'll read all. That is reading so slow. Have you notice that? Space registers by 40 for check before no, that's fine. So I'm just reading what it says on the screen. Right, so we've read it. Um so we'll save that. Uh right, so I'll save that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read the same chip on the other programmer the 56 which is its bigger brother there's all selected program read okay read yeah totally different it, it it's quicker because it, it was a dual unit right? so it's evidently got a faster clock rate so we'll save that just compare the two I'm just wondering now whether well, it sort of went at a bit of a cockeyed angle. It actually caused the issue. So, um, 
analysis data compare two files are identical okay so the program is okay well that's nice to know right well you've probably all got fed up by now so i'll leave you with that i hope this was of some help to you and if you've got any queries just leave us a message and i'll get back to you as soon as i can